memorial day to remember those veterans who made the ultimate sacrifice to preserve the freedoms we enjoy today. Hudson High School member will now play the call to assembly. Rabbi Daniel Freed of the congregation Anshe Emmett will not give the invocation. Please join me in prayer at this time. Gracious sovereign God, Lord of all nations, on this Memorial Day, we pause to reflect upon our blessings as a nation and the high cost of those blessings for many. Thank you for the freedom we enjoy in this country, for opportunities to flourish, and for the security of our land. Thank you for those who have served in the armed services of our country, risking their lives for our liberty. Thank you for those who have given their lives in service to our country, sacrificing in such a costly way for the sake of others. Thank you for a day set apart, not just for shopping and barbecuing, but also for solemn remembrance as we consider the sacrifices of so many in our military, O oh Lord, may we be more aware of just how blessed we are as a nation. May we be more grateful for our blessings, more faithful in stewarding them well, more eager to share them with others. We pray today for the families and friends of those who have given their lives in service to our nation. May they be comforted in their sadness. May they be reassured that the sacrifice of their loved ones contributed to a worthy cause. May they be proud of those they have lost in trusting their ultimate fate into your gracious hands. Even as we remember those who have given their lives in the past, we also think of those whose lives today are on the line. We think especially of the men and women who are serving in far-flung parts of the world, places of conflict, places of violence, places of strife. Protect them, encourage them, bring them home safely and soon. Give wisdom to the leaders of our armed services that they might know how best to deploy the troops in the cause of freedom. May their efforts be successful so that true peace with justice might be established in our world. Guide those who lead our nation in, eternal, in international affairs. Help them to pursue diplomatic paths that prevent needless conflict. May they have your wisdom about when and how to use the military might you have entrusted to them. O oh God of peace, stir in the hearts of the leaders of all nations and in all who would use violence to further their cause. Change their hearts and minds. Give them a passion for peace. Bring an end to the pain, the suffering, the injustice, and the violence in our world. And finally, we know, dear Lord, that ultimate peace will not come until all of humankind recognizes your sovereignty. Nevertheless, we pray for a foretaste of the future. We ask for the growth of peace throughout our world today so that fewer and fewer men and women will have to risk and even sacrifice their lives. All praise to you, God of grace, God of mercy, God of justice, and God of peace. Amen. 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 <laughs> Joseph Drebe of Hudson American Indian Post 184 will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Joe? Good morning. morning. Thank you, veterans, for your service and the families for your entire support. Please join me now as we salute our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Dorothy Avery of the Hendrick Hudson chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution, accompanied by her daughters Judy Snow and Nancy O'Day, will place the DAR wreath along with Cindy Schiller and Debbie Osuch of the Hudson 
Valley Blue Star Mothers will place the Gold Star Reef. That's over, right over there by the Veterans Monument. several dignitaries, including Congressman Gibson. They were given a motorcycle escort to the airport, where they were greeted once more by a huge crowd of people who paid a wonderful tribute to these men, some in their late 80s and some in their late 90s. They were so excited and could not believe the welcome they received. They were all issued blue shirts and name tags that identified them as part of the group of the men being honored by the Patriot Flights Incorporated under its president, Mr. Frank DeSorbo of Albany, who has given so many veterans a time of their life. We thank him for all he has done to help honor these veterans. They received a box lunch for noon and anything they may need, including canes, walkers, wheelchairs, and they had a guardian who would see to the needs of each man or woman. This organization was started by a veteran himself who never went overseas but wanted to do all he could to honor all servicemen and women. Patriot Flights Incorporated depends on donations for plane fares and anything these veterans would need. If you can aid the cause, all donations would be greatly appreciated. It is a wonderful way our servicemen can be thanked for a job well done, both here and abroad. They spent their time at all of the war, World War II memorial dedicated to our brave servicemen, including the changing of the guard at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Then upon their boarding, the bus would return them by plane, they, and they would be treated to a grand supper. But today, we honor the brave men who took part in our service here today, along with those unable to take part, but many of us know who they are. Again, I ask each of you to do all you can to help any veterans in any way you can, but do not forget our servicemen and women overseas who may be in need of personal items not available in foreign countries. There are many lists of needy things for them, and there are folks collecting just for this purpose. Please do your part to help those at home and overseas. And if you are standing next to a veteran, give him or her a hug and shake their hand telling him or her to have a great day. I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for attending today. <laughs> have a great day.
I would now like to introduce the Mayor of Hudson, William H. Hallibach, Jr. Good morning. Happy Memorial Day. Welcome to Hudson. Quick adjustment here for us 6'4 guys. Put that up a little bit. In 1868, the late Commander-in-Chief John A. Logan of the Grand Army of the Republic issued General Order Number 11 designating May 30th as Memorial Day. He declared it to be for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion, and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. <coughs> the first national celebration of Memorial Day, known as Decoration Day, took place at Arlington National Cemetery. The national observance and tradition still taking place there today with the placing of a wreath of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and the decoration of each grave with a small American flag. While the tradition and remembrance continues here in the city of Hudson, Columbia County and across this great nation on the last Monday in May, we must, on this most solemn holiday, stop and honor the great sacrifices that our courageous men and women of our armed forces have made so that we may have the freedom and prosperity we enjoy. We must recognize the valor, loyalty, and perseverance of those who serve their country as we celebrate Memorial Day 2014 with friends and family. While we stand here unified as patriotic Americans, we continue to face the sad reality of often encountering those individuals who refuse to honor the sacrifices of those who fought for our freedom. Finding new ways to avoid responsibility, new ways to destroy the family and isolate and marginalize those who call for morality, and personal responsibility. There are those who have chosen not to recognize a veteran, applause, applaud the service to country by our brothers and sisters of the armed forces, and even in some cases, not to acknowledge the stars and stripes of the American flag, believe it or not. But the actions of a few cannot challenge the resolve of the will of the American spirit. And today, I stand united with all of you veterans and non-veterans alike in tribute to the men and women who lie in rest and those who are with us today and recognize and appreciate what all of you have given to us in the form of freedom. The great President of the United States, Ronald Reagan, once said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We did not pass it to our children in the bloodstream it must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same, or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. On behalf of the city of Hudson, it is an honor to be standing before you this morning to celebrate Memorial Day. I want to thank each and every one of you who have served for the freedom that I have, and those who have passed for serving for the freedom that I have. And I want to congratulate all the organizations for the great work that you did in our local uh, resting place by pro providing the flags uh, to our, our, our past brothers and sisters. Thank you. Bear with me. Jessica Sweet will now sing God Bless America in memory of her grandfather, Whitmore Sweet. God bless America, land that I love. Stand be 
beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. Oswaldo Rizek Garcia, Hutton High School senior band member, will recite the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now, we are engaged in the great civil war, testing whether that nation, or any nation so conceived and so dedicated, can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to de dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But, in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate it, we cannot dedicate we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who have struggled here, have consecrated far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note, nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who have fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave us the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. Sarah Bonalato was going to recite in Flanders Field, but she's sick. So Samantha Kilborn of the Hudson High School Band, senior member, will recite in Flanders Field in a place. Samantha? In Flanders Field, the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce here amid the guns below, we are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up the quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders Fields. In the Hudson High School band, well, let me wait just a minute. <laughs> Okay, the, the Hudson High School Band will now play the United States Navy
Richard Cowie was born, raised, and still resides in Hudson. In 1971, he graduated from Hudson High School, having participated in varsity soccer and tennis, as well as other activities. He graduated from Colgate University in 1975 with an A.B. in English and Political Science. He is also a graduate of the Albany Law School of Union University, graduating in 1978. Judge Cowick immediately returned to Hudson and after graduating from Albany Law School, began his legal practice as an associate with the firm of Rapport and Myers. In 1983, he formed his own law firm and shortly thereafter was joined by the late Bill Krenner, with whom he practiced law for more than 22 years. During his 32-year tenure as a practicing attorney, Judge Cowick served as assistant legal advisor to the city of Hudson, assistant district attorney, counsel to the city of Hudson Housing Authority, counsel to the Columbia County Board of Realtors, and volunteer counsel for more than 10 years to the retired senior volunteer program. He also served as vice president of the Columbia County Bar Association and as its president in 2002-2003. Judge Cowart has been an active member of the community as well. He currently serves on the board of directors of the Second Show Incorporated, the Columbia Children's Foundation Incorporated, and the Hudson City School District Community Endowment Fund Incorporated. Previous public service includes terms on the Hudson City School District Board of Education, the Board of Directors of Columbia Memorial Hospital, and Parsons Child and Family Center. He has been a volunteer soccer, softball, and basketball coach for every youth, and is one of the organizers of the annual Ghostly Dollar 5K Road Race in support of Hudson Area Library. Judge Colwick was first elected to the bench as Hudson City Court Judge in November 2008 and served proudly in the capacity for three years. In November 2011, he was elected County Court Judge and currently presides over matters in County Court, Family Court, and Surrogate Court. He has been recently designated as Acting Supreme Court Justice and has served or is currently serving in addition to Columbia County in Ulster, Green, Schoharie, and Albany counties. He and his wife, Tony, have been married for 28 years. Together they have raised three children, all of whom are now young adults. It's my honor and pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, the Honorable Judge Richard Cole. Thank you all, thank you very, very much. To all the men and women, who have so valiantly served, or who are currently serving in the armed forces, whether here, overseas, in a support role, or in active combat, I say thank you. Thank you for your service, thank you for your dedication, and thank you for the loyalty to this great country. We are fortunate to have in our midst a person who not only served in the active military, but continues to serve our veterans in their transition to civilian life. Gary Flaherty, the Executive Director of Columbia County Veterans Service Department, was recently nominated and entered into the New York State Veterans Hall of Fame. I have had the pleasure of working with Mr. Flaherty. Mr. Flaherty is a tireless advocate for veterans who have become involved in the legal process. He is willing to go the extra mile to help and assist both the veteran and the court with some of the unique and often latent problems and issues that sometimes arise upon a veteran's return to civilian life. His insights and suggestions have been particularly helpful to me when confronted with these situations. Thank you and congratulations, Gary. Like many people, I had a vague notion about Memorial Day when I was growing up. I could tell you it was the end of a three-day weekend, I could tell you there was always a parade, and I could tell you that it marked the unofficial start of the summer season in the Northeast with barbecue with friends and family at the end of the day. I have come to appreciate much more this day's history and importance.